Hello guys, and welcome back to another cold episode. On today's episode, we are talking about Gladiator Beast Tri Brigade. Why? I don't know. Look, I've tried every other Tri Brigade variant that actually does anything, so I figured, hey, why not make a big Omni Negate? Well, a Monster Negate that's actually pretty good, right? So that's how this went. That's, that, that's what we're doing. So, uh, real quick, if you don't know, the Gladiator Beasts have a fair amount of decent support. Um, and, uh, uh, yeah, that's basically it. They, they have some decent support. Not much, though. So I'm going to quickly go through the card by card and the uh, explanation. The extra deck in particular is not optimal, um, and neither is the main deck. I would rather have three droplets as opposed to the, uh, uh, the Raigeki and just play 41. But alas, uh, didn't have the necessary materials, uh, so that's why the extra deck and like is uh, not perfect. However, for the rest of it, it's pretty good. Um, so we have the three Nerval, we have two Keros, three Kit, and three Fractal, as well as three uh, Tenki, and the one Revolt. Pretty standard for Tridergate. Now, we are also playing Cat, Rescue Cat, because it is a good normal summon, and our deck does kind of need... Uh, not need, but, like, it likes playing the that extra normal that's uh, pretty good. So, of course, we're playing three of this. Uh, it just gets off, uh, us a lot of advantage uh, by doing it. Gets us a free Fractal, gets us into uh, a search for the Fractal as well. Or, not Fractal, Ferragy. In order to um, uh, to get onto the field, stuff like that. So, very, very useful. Um, as for the rest of the cards, we are playing five... Gladiator Beast Monsters, and every single one of them is a brick. That's right. Uh, we do not want to see a single one of them in our hands. Let's start off with Bestiari. That's it. We're, yep, Bestiari. Uh, Laquari, uh, Equitus, or uh, Equeste. I don't know how to say this, this card's name. Uh, Vespasius, as well as Augustus. All of these are in here, either because they are beasts or because they fulfill a requirement in our extra deck. That is it. So, Bestiari, Laquari, uh, a cast, a, 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 a cast, their beast, beast warrior, winged beast monsters. Uh, Vespasius is the fusion material for Domitianus, so we're playing it, as well as the Augustus uh, is just in here as a, another uh, level five, specifically a level five or higher that we can play to, ga to go into this fusion, which we'll get into in a second. As for the spells, we are, of course, running two a piece of Gladiator Beast Proving Ground, as well as to a piece of Gladiator Beast reje Rejection. Um, this is just Rhoda, non-once per turn. It's pretty good. The problem is you're you're searching out Glad Beasts, which you don't want. The only reason you would search them is to pitch them to the graveyard for Chaos. There's no reason to search anything. So we're only playing two. That's it. Honestly, yeah, I could probably play less than it all. I'll pretty much do the exact same thing. Now, Rejection is pretty interesting. If a Glad Beast is special summoned from the main deck, you could special summon another Glad Beast monster from your deck with a different type, uh, which is pretty good. So uh, that's that's another reason why we are playing the Laquari, because if we didn't, we wouldn't have a target for the Rejection. Um, so there you go. <clears throat> pretty decent. Uh, it also allows you to, like tag out if you use the uh the panther or not tag out uh but get like another guy off of the panther which is pretty nice as well so there you go uh and then and then the rest are just uh, power cards uh triple maxi triple pankratops because we do want to go second uh or at least have good options going second and pink is just right there uh this should probably be a three of i'm not uh, i'm not gonna lie it's probably the best of the going second options uh a regeki two lightning storm two triple tack uh two called by and a droplet and uh that is it for the main deck as for the extra deck uh pretty standard for the tribegate stuff al mirage uh light heart the two ferrajit one bear brum i should be playing two shereg i'm not that's just yeah uh, I'd probably play it instead of the Lightheart, but I don't have the materials, so there you go. Uh, the one Rugal and the one Access Code Talker. As for the Glad Beast cards, we are playing one Geyseris, which just pops two when it's summoned. Does require uh, Bestiari and another Glad Beast. Shuffles them into the deck. Pops two. Pretty good. We're playing uh, and, and a Bata, which requires a Ghostus, as well as two Glad Beasts. And what it does is if special summoned, uh, or is summoned, if summoned this way, you can special summon a level 7 or lower fusion monster from your extra deck, ignoring its summoning conditions, which is pretty nice. But then on top of that, at the end of the battle, it shuffles back 2, which is also fairly decent. Um, and this triggers the Geyseris, which is another reason why we are playing it. Um, so you just get to summon out the Geyseris and pop 2, which is pretty cool. Um, 
So again, that that's kind of why we're playing it. Also, we're playing to a piece of Tamer Editor, which is really good because what it says is, or first of all, its requirements are a bit big. It requires two level five or higher Glad Beast monsters, which is why we're playing the uh, the, the Vespasius as well as the Augustus. Uh, then we are playing, or sorry, then it says once per turn, special summon a Glad Beast fusion monster from your extra deck, ignoring its summoning conditions. Notably, unlike this one, it were, it can summon any of the Glad Beast monsters. Uh, so what this means is you can summon Domitianus. Now, if you don't know what Dom does. It says once per turn when your opponent activates a monster effect, negate its effect and just destroy it. Pretty good. However, it also does the tag out thing as well. And you choose the attack targets for your opponent's attacks. Great. So two big glad beasts go into this guy, which would then make this guy. And now this guy can be used as extra material or it could potentially on the next turn, summon out an Ana or summon out a Geyseris or whatever it may be, which is also pretty nice. So it generates more advantage that way. Uh, they all have the, uh, the uh, a similar effect to tag out into a guy or two guys. So there's that. Uh, but yeah, this guy is pretty good. Just a large lad who uh, not only protects your monsters from combat, which is pretty nice with like Rugal and stuff like that, um, but also more importantly is just a negate, which is the reason to play this deck. This guy is the reason to play this deck in any capacity. Uh, is it worth it? No, but there you go. Uh, and that is it for the deck. Let's hop into the replays and show you how this deck performed. All right, so here we are going second with basically just Glad Beast at this point, but we also have Mag C, so there's a potential that we can actually do something here. My opponent is going to reveal that they are on Naturia. Woo. And it's Naturia Runic. How cool. Um, I have the Mag C still, but, uh, oh, Tanky actually gets us into this game. So we're going to start off with the Tanky. We're going to activate the effect in order to search out the Fractal. We're going to activate the Fractal effect, then get met by Ash, Blossom, and Joyous Spring. Tragic. That's fine. I will activate the Rejection here, since we drew it, uh, and then go into the Bestiari. Bestiari is going to attack, which will trigger the Vespasius. Vespasius special summons itself and boosts the other guys. Now, both of these guys are going to attack for a fair amount of damage and then tag out, uh, to which my opponent will also go for the Naturia Blessing, to which I will chain the Maxi. And uh, remember, just, just, I, just remember that this guy exists. Re remember Ant Jaw. Okay, read this card. I want you to read it. Notice something? There is not a once per turn. Keep that in mind. Uh, I draw a triple attack, which is kind of funny. Uh, but we're going to go Akest, uh, as well as Rejection here. And uh, my opponent will activate the Ant Jaw, to which I will chain the Droplet. I don't want them to get into a Mole Cricket here, so there's that. Uh, but yeah, now we get the Akest. Akest isn't going to do anything. It's, it's just activating its effect. Uh, I just needed to tag out into something, and this is what I wanted to tag out into, because, um, yeah, obviously this allows me to go into the Laquari. Either way, it, it would have done the exact same thing. Anyway, uh, we now go into the Bestiari here, which now gets us to a pop. Uh, this is also why I did this the way that I did. Bestiari triggering first, and then the, um, the, the Vespasius triggering second. To the which my opponent will go, Ant Jaw! Because guess what? That's not once per turn, just any time I special summon a guy. Great, fantastic. So I'm going to look at my opponent's hand here, and I'm going to be like, hey, what's that last card? And it was a Mole Cricket. Good thing I did. Good thing I did. Mole Cricket's crazy. So yeah, we're going to shuffle that away, and then I'm going to go into Test Panther, to the which my opponent will go Ant Jaw. Now, why are they just not activating? Because it's obviously negated. It's going to be negated every time. Stop activating this. D don't worry, it gets worse. So we're gonna grab the Vespasius here. We're gonna tag out here with the Bestiari to go into the Augustus, which will then trigger the Augustus to special summon the Vespasius, to the which my opponent will chain once again. Woo! And be negated. Anyway, out comes the guy. And of course, they're gonna activate the effect, to the which I will then tag into the uh, Tamer, to the which they will chain. Uh, or activate their effect. I will summon the Domitianus, to which my opponent will activate, and I will fu- I will negate. I will negate. Now, mind you, as of right now, in the replay, it just looks like, oh, I activate my thing, they activate their thing, I do my thing, they activate their thing, I summon my thing, they activate their thing, and it's real fast and snappy. That was not what was happening. Bro sat there, read every single one of my cards, and then went, yeah, I'll activate. And I was like, oh my gosh. And then and then I'd summon another guy and he'd be like. Yeah, I'll activate. 
bro was tilted, and I was too. So I'm gonna pop him. Just get him out of there. Anyway, uh, I'm gonna link off here into the Rugal and uh, just pass the turn. This game is now over, unless they top deck like... No, I cannot think of anything that they could top deck that would get them into this game. Uh, we're gonna go for the Rugal. Rugal is going to bounce back the Fractal, and now I'm going to BM because my opponent is a horrible person. Uh, I draw a Rescue Cat, which is great, so I'm going to go for the Rescue Cat. We're going to summon out two kits, and we're going to go into the two kits into the Ferris Sheet. We're going to activate the effect of the kit in order to dump Nerval. Nerval is going to grab Karos. Uh, we're going to go for the Ferris Sheet here, special summoning the Karos, because I'm stupid. And then we are going to go for the Shureg. Uh, we're going to banish the Smiting Storm, and then we're going to link off here into the Bear Brum. And then we're going to search out a card, as well as draw one and just put it back. Uh, we search out the cat, and then we're going to pitch both of those to the graveyard in order to bring back the kit. Why am I doing this? Because it's mean. Uh, we're then going to summon the beast dragon from the gladiator beasts. And then we're going to go into the access code talker and, and not even attack with it because it's funny. I just realized I didn't talk about the, the two link monsters that the gladiator beasts have. Uh, don't worry about that. They don't do anything. All right, here we are once again going a second, and that's Pancrotops and some Glad Beasts. Let's see what we can do. My opponent starts off with Planet Pathfinder. Yep. Yep. Scash Jira. Yeah. Yep. Cool. And they get, they get to get whatever they want. They searched Ogre, by the way, there. They searched Ogre there. That's crazy. What did they banish? Lightning Storm. Now, was I drawing that lightning storm? No, but it still hurts. It still hurts. Anyway, let's see what we can do. The answer to this question is uh, not much. My opponent is going to special summon a unicorn, of course. And I'm going to special summon Pink here. Woo! Now comes Pink. Uh, now, Pink is really, really good because it contests the Arise Heart, and they can't really do anything about it. Um, so there's that. Anyway, uh, out comes the Scareclaw Cash, to which my opponent will uh, just. I, I, I don't know why they do this. Like, my, my opponent plays the rest of this pretty poorly, and it's... Well, I'll, I'll just show you. So, we're going to grab the Fractal here, and then I just, I just have to deal with the uh, Macrocosmos. To the which my opponent will Fenrir the Tanky. Thank you. Uh, and now, <clears throat> if I had a second Shureg, I'm going to tell you right now, if I had a second Shureg, i win this game. They banish Shureg. That costs me the game. Them banishing Shureg loses me this game. Because I only have the one. Now, if I had the second one, I win this game, and I'll show you how. But it's fine. Um, anyway, they're going to uh, lock up these two zones, which is very good, because those are the two zones that Farajit points to. And they have a called by. Because of course they do. Because called by is a fair, balanced Yu-Gi-Oh card. So there you go. Hip hip hooray. Love to see it. Uh, called by should be banned. I despise this card, and I despise its, its existence. Anyway, my opponent is going to go for the tier cash here in order to mill... Some cards. They're also going to go for the Theosis to add back the Ogre, which is a, a choice, I guess. And they mill who but me. Why did they mill me? I have no idea. That is just uh, objectively bad. Anyway, we're going to go for the Rescue Cat here. We're going to summon out two kits. We're going to go into those, or we're going to use those kits to go into the Ferragy. We're going to activate the, the kit effect in order to send the Nerval, and Nerval effect is going to grab the Karos. And then we are going to activate the effect of the Ferragy special summoning out the um, uh, the Nerval here to go into the Bedroom. We're going to activate the Fairy Sheet in order to draw a card. I'm going to put back the Vespasios because it's not doing anything. And then we're going to grab a Macquarie here just because we can. Uh, here I go for the Karos. Uh, I don't know if this is necessarily the best option, but it doesn't really matter. Again, if I had Shureg, I do win this game because I banish four here. Uh, go into the Shureg, banish this guy, take all of these to go into access code, search out another guy, search out a, a whatever it may be, um, as well as search out with Bear Brum. Great, fantastic, uh, and then and then uh, you know we walk over the field and uh, it's it's pretty good, you know. Uh, but alas, that's not what happens. So I I still go access code. I still do as much as I can, and uh, yeah, you'll see how much I actually get to clean up here with the access code talker. So we're gonna go access code talker. We're going to obtain it, or we're gonna pop one. We're going to pop two, uh, which is the field spell. We're going to go to the combat here. We're going to walk over the unicorn. We're going to go with three. We're going to deal with the Fenris. And then I set one and I pass the turn. Now, again, had I been able to banish this guy, they are on top deck mode. They they have the uh, ogre in hand. They have to see either birth or theosis. And if I have revolt here, um, 
I might win the game. They, you know, if I have two Shureg in my extra deck, I, I probably had, had won that game. So there you go. But alas, I do lose because I can't do anything. So, Cash Tira. So fun. Uh... All right, we're back with the deck. And honestly, this deck is not good. Uh, or more specifically, this deck is hindered by the inclusion of the Gladiator Beasts, as opposed to just playing a pure Tri Brigade or a Tri Brigade with it X other variant, right? Um, the Gladiator Beasts are actively hindering this deck, and you could say, like, oh, but the Glad Beast stuff, if you want Glad Beast to do well, you play it with Tri Brigades. True. However, if you want Glad Beasts to, to do well, um, they won't. That's just not going to be the case. If you wanted to play a Glad Beast deck, I would not suggest playing the Tri-Brigade stuff because at that point, you're not playing Glad Beasts. You're just playing Tri-Brigade. But bad, right? Um, and, and like there's enough stuff in here to make Glad Beast okay, right? Uh, like you have Test Tiger and stuff like that. So you could definitely make a deck and have it work. Uh, you could definitely play like a going second version of the deck with like a bunch of board breakers and stuff like that and being able to get, you know, generate a whole bunch of advantages by like attacking and like Pankratops. You know, just, just draw Pankratops, you know. Uh, but for the most part, I this deck doesn't do much. Or I should say, Gladiator Beasts don't really do much for the Tri Brigade stuff. And you could also argue, like, oh, what if you just played, like, two fives so that you could just maybe go into the Tamer to go into Dama? Uh, yeah, you could do that. That That is technically an option. It, it just, again, it just kind of makes the deck more inconsistent. Like, you like a lot of the extra deck having additional extra deck options for Tri Brigade because a lot of them will come up. Not having Apo, not having uh, more Shureg, not having more uh, random other Link monsters that you can go to, into. Like, they're gonna be occasional opportunity. Like, at that point, just play just play Apex Avian. Just play some more again Apex Avian, and yeah, that's just better. Like, objectively, it's an untargetable guy that's also a negate. As opposed to a guy that can be targeted, but is a monster negate. Yeah. So there's not really a reason to play the Glad Beast stuff. However, with that being said, actually doing the Glad Beast combo is cool. I do like the way that Glad Beasts actually work, and I wish that they were actually good. But they're not, which is kind of tragic. Anyway, that's going to be it for this episode. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope that you guys did not enjoy. If you did, I'd like to very much so appreciate it. And remember to always... Stay frosty. Bye-bye. Shout out to the Frost Guard, my members. Thank you guys so much for the support, and I hope you enjoy the content.